the FIA Formula E Championship is a series like no other. All electric race cars flash through the heart of some of the world's most iconic cities. This all-action urban racing has been seen as an ecological innovator, capturing the eyes of the world. Season one provided us with one of the most unique endings to any motorsport season. The championship was decided on the final corner of the final race, when Nelson Piquet Jr. made history in London and was crowned the first ever Formula E champion. After that sensational first season, full of action and drama, Formula E added more races to the calendar. And with teams now being able to develop their own drivetrain technology, the racing became even more unpredictable. We go green in Beijing, Malaysia, Uruguay, Buenos Aires, Mexico City, Long Beach, Paris, Berlin, London. I love this shot. <laughs> and that is flat out. What a move. Tell him to get out of the way. Let's take a look back at the best action from season two, starting once again in Beijing's iconic Olympic Park. With defending champion Nelson Piquet Jr. at the back of the grid, it was time for thunder in Beijing. After the end of season one and how it was, uh, you know, I thought it was going to be very difficult to get the same kind of drama or emotion for season two. But um, luckily we did it. There's such an unknown here, but nobody knows quite what's going to happen with all this new technology. On pole position, it is Sebastian Buemi. Not to a trick. Reigning champion, Nelson Piquet Jr. is starting at the back of the grid. A long wait for the lights, but finally they're illuminated. All five lights are on. We go green in Beijing, and it's a very good getaway from Nick Heidfeld. A lot of wheels spin for Nico Prost on the run down towards the first corner, and a big lockup as well from Prost. Heidfeld goes around the outside into second position. He went around the outside last year at Turn 1. He's pulled exactly the same move. Turvey having a little bit of contact in the middle of the pack, but I think he should be able to get away with it. Degrassi trying to challenge Prost. Vern is up there into a fourth position as well. So a good start from, sorry, fifth position for Vern, but he's got Senna right up behind him. It's a slow start from Sarazan. He drops from sixth down to eighth. But there's the look up the inside from Heidfeld. Senna trying to go through as well. Sebastian Buemi is the man who has held the lead of the race, though. And off goes Simona de Silvestro. There's jean eric Vern on the attack, past Bruno Senna into 11. Not close enough. And now Jean-Éric Verne, after that attack, is under pressure. He's got Loic Duval up the inside into the Huey Chong chicane. He's it through, touched. and Verne is being very robust in his attempt to defend there. But Duval's got that place done. He's up into sixth position now, and Verne drops down to seventh. So it's all... Oh, he's still trying to dart away into turn 16. <laughs> he's passed him back. <laughs> wow, great move from Jean-Éric Verne into 16. He'll now need to defend. I mean, look at the move there by Sam Bird. Up the inside of Loic Duval into the final corner, and that is move done from Sam Bird. He's now up into seventh position. So we go back on board with Duval. Oh, big lock up in front and straight on, oh. that's Sam Bird. So Bird, just after making that great move, goes straight on down at turn three. All and that hard work. Exactly, and he will be dropping well down the order because he's going to, uh, he has managed to recover just in front of Robin Franks. Is that Vern attacking Senna going through up the inside into turn 16? So good move there from Jean Eric Vern. And Duval's Loic Duval now it. will try and follow through. Looks to the inside. Is he going to go for it? Yep. He is. But he's going to go into the back of Vern if he's not careful. Has to really get on the brakes. And both of them go past Bruno Senna. Here comes Duval down into Huey Chong Chicane, super close to the back, and he's going around the outside, and they're going to touch there. Very forceful defensive work from Verne. Now Duval took that position, but he skipped across the chicane in order to do so. Watch out for Sam Bird. Vern knows it, covers the inside line. These two teammates going absolutely wheel to wheel, and Bird's going to get it stopped just in time. Here's the attack now coming up the inside from Nick Heidfeld. He knows he needs to get this job done, and he has done into turn three. Here we now, go. Here we go. Yeah, well, it's difficult to see, but Villeneuve has said what? De Costa's oh, yeah. saying sorry already. Look how far back Prost is. He's closing in, he's closing in, he's closing in, and he just nails right, that it. That was fine. That was a great move there. In it? comes Nico Prost from third position. So Nico Prost pits because of that damage to the rear wing. The correct call, I think, from the uh, race directors here. There's there the look go. at the inside. D'Ambrosio looks up. He's going to hit him. Oh, my goodness me. Yeah, you two boys. Rule. Do not hit your teammate. 
the chequered flag falls. Buemi wins the first race of season two Formula E. Seb, I haven't seen you all day, but you, you were so far ahead. It was mighty. Tell us about the race. It was a good race. It's uh, it's a bit of a weird feeling because I felt I was a little bit on my own, but I will not, you know, be against that. It's it's good to to win with a bit of margin. Um, I was expecting to be doing one lap less than the other guys, but then they told me they were on the same strategy. So I said, okay, it doesn't look too bad. So I'm I'm happy the team has done a great job and Renault has done a good uh, power train. So uh, just looking forward to the next races right now. The biggest cheers of all reserved for Buemi and the guard of honor from the Renault team. It's the trophy for Buemi, it's delight for Buemi, it's the championship lead for Buemi after victory in China. Merci les mecs, nickel, belle gestion. You have to get the good results at the beginning of the year. So we were a little bit too too fast and maybe not uh, we did not concretize enough. So we felt a lot of pressure in the middle of the year. Put your dry at Malaysia for round two. For the drivers, the temperature was already rising in a championship where fierce competition demanded results from the start. Overcook it and things could go very wrong. One question was on everyone's lips. Could Renault Edam's driver Sebastian Buemi continue his dominance in the electric garden? Sebastian Buemi on pole position. Duval and Da Costa on row two. All five lights are on, and we go green in Malaysia, and it's a good getaway from Sebastian Buemi as well. Antonio Felix Da Costa looking racy on the run down towards turn one. He's not going to be close enough, though, because Duval covers the inside line. Good start from Prost going around the outside as everyone comes into the first chicane for the first time, and round goes Heidfeld. He's been hit by Jean-Eric Verne in the middle of the pack, but up in front, it's Sebastian Buemi who holds the lead, coming up to the right-hander. Duval in second place, then it's Da Costa, and there's Oliver Turvey. Oliver Turvey's gone off, and I think I think that's at turn five. It is, yeah. Here's a look at the replay. He's got him by himself. Swings into the left. What happened there? That, that was odd. odd, odd accident. He moved yeah. the, the I, barrier. I can't believe it. From the straight, from the start, the throttle was sticking on, so. Which was pushing me forwards. It was completely unpredictable. It was the middle sector. Duval lost an awful lot of time. He matched Buemi in the Here first and Prost. second ones. Prost going to the outside of Antonio Felix da Costa coming no, down into turn happen. three. <laughs> but can he get the cut back just like Sam Bird did last year? And up the inside into four. And da Costa tries to move across. But Prost has made the move stick and gets up into third position. And here we go. Whoa. It'll be right here on the apex. There you go. Oh, did a bit of damage as well. Damage. Oh, oh, and there's Sebastian Buemi. Sebastian Buemi is slowing the race leader and has he run into problems for the Renault team? Unbelievable stuff. Buemi was commanding this race. So why has Prost come in to change now? Because then? he was hoping for a safety car. It's Do a throw of the dice. If he gets a safety car, he's in the lead. Yeah. He's, he's, he's jumped them. He's not going to jump them now, is he? But as it is, Renault now are absolutely... Um, in trouble. In trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I know where you were going with that one, Jack. Degrassi is in front of, da of Loic Duval and De Costa's in front of them both. So what has happened there to Loic Duval? A really slow pit stop, he's lost two positions. Here comes Lucas Degrassi trying to get past Antonio Felix De Costa. Down into turn seven. Whoa, Nick Heidfeld. Woof. That's very impressive because it, as we talked about, as slow as the steering rack is with these cars. Let's see, watch, watch the steering come out of his hands. Oh, that is that save of the season so far. Save of any season from me. <laughs> Last year, this year. I bet if you give him 10 million quid, he couldn't do it again. But he tried. There we go. There goes Sam Bird. Prost is defending like crazy here. He's got to. It's his only option. But Lucas Degrassi gets drive. the drive coming out of the final corner and pulls alongside. Down the start, finish straight. Absolutely wheel to wheel. Prost holding the lead at the moment. Watch out for De Costa because he could be lurking on the inside when they get to turn one. Degrassi up the inside into the lead of the race. Temperature critical. Please consider break them two. De Costa <laughs> slides it and just keeps it together. He's in third place. Looking sort of dead certain to be taking Big second. Move. There's the look up the inside into seven. De Costa goes through. Does he get it stopped? I thought the rear's locked there, and he slid his way through. But De Costa into second place. Oh, oh he's got a problem. Antonio Felix De Costa. De Costa stopped on track. De Costa stopped on track. Mark Preston can't believe it. 
goodness me, there goes Duval, up the inside of Nico Prost and into second place. Do you think he wants the win? <laughs> <laughs> now he's gone after Degrassi, isn't he? Oh. Here comes D'Ambrosio up the inside of Nico Prost to take third position away. D'Ambrosio goes through and it's now second and third for the Dragon team. Oh, here comes Robin Freins up the inside now on Nico Prost. Up into turn seven, Freins goes through and that's fourth position now for Robin Freins. Into our left brake region, map three or map two. And is that the other Dragon yes, car it he's is? Hit the, he's hit the wall. Look, Loic left Duval, left Loic left Duval is damage. in big troubles. And that means that uh, Jerome D'Ambrosio is up into second place. Robin Freins goes through and he's up into third. Sam Bird is up into fourth. Where did he come from? Off goes oh, Freins. No. Freins is in the wall. He might have just about got away with that potentially. No, I think Duval has. No, he's hit. front wing. Look at Duval's left rear suspension. So he's done that. French has done the front wing. Oh. So this is on board with uh, Nico Prost, and he's gone straight on into the wall. What is happening? And we've got the other Dragon car off. Jerome D'Ambrosio from third place is off the track and in the wall. And he's that promotes Robin Freins up into third position. He's broke the suspension too. But here comes Lucas Degrassi through the final corner. What a topsy-turvy Ypres here in Putrajaya. <laughs> Renault lost out with both cars and Lucas Degrassi was on hand to take the win and take the lead of the championship. Yeah, oh, that's one of the maddest races I've ever watched. And, uh, oh, we're just going to see it here. Oh, he's gone into the wall on the exit of seven. Yep. Wow. So, yeah, he must have gone in there properly quickly. Well, you can see how difficult the conditions were. The amount of sand I have in my eyes, the amount of sand I have in the car. It was an extremely tough race, mainly determined by battery temperature, which is the same problem as we had last year. But gladly, we managed it better than the others. We did a fantastic job. The team on the background did the perfect strategy and he managed to claim the victory and now a leader in the championship. Lucas Degrassi, an elated Brazilian, his first win of the season and the top of the championship. Great job, team, great job. What a difficult race. A commanding drive from Lucas Degrassi saw him take the lead in the Drivers' Championship. But the ever-quick Sebastian Bremi was just eight points behind. Last year's winner here, Sam Bird, made up the top three. Round three, Punta del Este, Uruguay. This resort playground, a surfer's paradise. But while some do battle with the Atlantic Ocean, others do battle with electric race cars around tight urban street circuits. Could Bremi and the Renault Edams team get their title challenge back on track at Power in Paradise? And in the next 57.1 miles, we will find out who will win round three of the FIA Formula E Championship. Radio check. Radio check. Here come the lights. It's Jerome D'Ambrosio on pole. Loic Duval alongside him. We go green. And it's a slow start from Duval. And what a good start that is from Sam Bird. Is he up into second place on the run down to turn one? Yes, he is. The Virgin driver up into second. Lockups further back. Great start from Daniel Apt. And the two Apt cars go third and fourth as everyone tries to squeeze in through for the first time. So it's a slow start from Nico Prost. Almost contact there as they come through the left-hander. That was Bruno Senna and Antonio Felix da Costa. Robin Freins is up there too. But a great start from Jerome D'Ambrosio. Oh, here's a move from Buemi. Buemi up the inside, and can he get through into the hairpin? Yes, he can. Yeah. Easy peasy. Fabulous move, yeah. Here comes Sebastian Buemi through on Jerome D'Ambrosio. Buemi leads into turn 17, and the Renault car is now into the lead of round three of the Formula E Championship. It's Degrassi. Degrassi's in second place in front of the two Dragon cars. And getting involved in there is Sam Bird, so Bird has made up a position as well. Oh, and there's that slowing Sam Bird up the inside, goes into turn 13. Has Sam Bird got a problem, or was he just lifting coasting? But no, the Dragon is through. He's got to have a problem with that. I'll do a reset, I'll give you instruction. This is Vern using his fan boost to go past Stefan Sarazan. Sarazan in a more retro helmet this weekend, which is uh, cool. And oh, and here's a look up the inside from Vern. He's done it, but he's gone in way too deep. PK gets the cutback, side by side, contact. PK holds the position. Jean Eric Vern is waving his fist like a furious Frenchman and may have had damage to the car there, I but he he's going to try his, again. Keep his hands on the wheel and try and get back past him. <laughs> that, was a, that was a 
you know, he misjudged it a little bit, but uh, it's not PK's fault. No, PK was totally legitimate to go back underneath him there as they get on the brakes now. Oh, now he's not legitimate. He's in the wall. PK off. Oh, that's a big old hit. Now he's going to take the checkered flag and take victory in Punta del Este. That's domination right there from Sebastian Buemi. Merci, les mecs. It's good to come back. The team has done a great job, especially my mechanics. So I, I really like to say thank you. You know, they had to, to change the casing of the gearbox, everything. So in the end, it's a, it's a, it's a good one. Sebastian Buemi wins in Punta del Este, takes the lead of the championship. Champagne on the beach. It's not a bad place to be. I've been to worse places for a motor race. Super, merci les mecs. La voiture était assez incroyable. Buenos Aires was one of the most action-packed races in season one. We go green in Buenos Aires. Great move from Nick Heifer around the outside of the first corner. Oh, and here comes the Grassi up the inside into third position. Cracking move. Nose to tail for the lead of the race. Oh, Buemi, he's broken his front right. Lucas de Grassi leads. You can hear the despair. Oh, de Grassi's off as well. Race leader out of the race. Big lock up from Anthony, hits Alka Schwari, and that allows cross through. The checker flag falls, and it's a win for Antonio Felix da Costa. Would lightning bite again for season two? A real buzz on the grid. Sam Bird did a fantastic lap to get pole position. We've got Buemi at exactly the other end. Nobody's quite sure what to expect in this race. Radio check. Radio check. Copy that, Sam. Here we go, Jack. All five lights are on, and we go racing in Buenos Aires, and it's a very good start from Prost, but can he get the inside line on the run down towards the first corner? No. Bird comes over, covers it across, bit of a lock-up. The Costa, Prost, and Sarazan, very close behind. Everyone safely through turn one. Now Buemi up the inside of Senna, and Duran, and D'Ambrosio almost loses it at turn four. Sebastian Buemi right up behind Nick Heidfeld and Cruz is through down into the box. Not even a competition there. Daniel Abt right here, look at this. Oh, goes to the inside and can he get that job done into turn four? Yes, he can. I thought Abt was going to cover him. That's Sebastian Buemi, the championship leader. He's come from 18th on the grid. He's now up into fourth position and he's right up behind Stefan Sarazan out onto the start grid and he's going to pull alongside and pass Sarazan. The next man in front of him, championship rival Lucas Degrassi. Degrassi's got Buemi coming up behind me, so he should be pretty busy. Degrassi covers the inside line, the two championship battlers. Buemi sells in the dummy. Buemi goes through into second place. Buemi is P2 behind you. Sam, that's perfect. Plenty of energy. You've got four laps remaining. Still looking good. You're controlling the race very well. Okay, je confirme. Je suis concentré. Dis-moi ce qu'il faut faire. Ponceau, Sam. Ponceau. Bird. P1 avec 2% passé en plus que toi. En plus Oui, il sauve de l'énergie pour les derniers tours. All eyes glued to the screen. <laughs> How oversteering was that It's unbelievable. Who's your money on, Jack? No. No, I mean neither. <laughs> Il reste deux tours. Deux tours. Oh, oh did he punch the wall? Me. That was so close to the wall. Sam Bird. I Here think that Buemi. was the wall. Down to turn one. Good smooth driving there, Sam. Perfect. Buemi's going to make a move here, I'm telling you. Into four, Buemi's got it. Look, look at them getting closer and closer. Here he comes. Nose to tail through turn three. Sam Bird surely will cover the inside line. Sam, there is no need to lift. Go flat out all the way. Bird drives in the middle of the road, locks up, gets it stopped just about. Down towards turn seven. This Sam is his last Bird chance. Leads. Buemi is not going to be close enough, so all Bird has to do is make it through the final chicane. Désolé, j'ai pas eu les... Bird into the right-hander, makes it stick, and takes victory in Argentina! Yeah! Come on! <laughs> what a drive by both those guys there. J'ai pu penser parce que je voulais gagner, mais c'est clair qu'on aurait pu le faire en y pensant un peu plus. Sam, you legend, you absolute legend. That was a brilliant, brilliant drive. So controlled, fantastic. It's going nuts here, it's going nuts. I'm quite happy that that's over. <laughs> really happy that it's over. When he said last lap and I pulled a little bit of a gap to Seb, I was saving and saving and saving in the second car so that the last lap I could have a bit of a gap.
But then I made a couple of mistakes on the last lap. We were really struggling to slow the car down, and uh, Seb exploited that really well. Yeah, what a race, what a race. Sam Bird on the top step for the third time after immense pressure. Great race from start to finish. Fabulous, fabulous race. Cheers, boys, that was tough, but we did it. Well done to everybody. We were perfect this weekend, absolutely perfect. That excellent drive from Sam Bird closes the gap on second place Lucas Degrassi, but after four races, Sebastian Wemmy led the championship by four points. Special race for me was clearly Argentina. I started last because of the spin in qualifying, and then I finished second. I overtook Lucas a few laps to the end, and clearly that's the kind of race where I could have lost a lot of points to him. And you know, finishing second, starting from last, was one of the key moments of the season for me. Round five, Mexico City, the oldest capital of the Americas, a 700-year-old stronghold. But now, a new dawn. Electricity was about to be unleashed on a city nine million strong. Battle lines drawn, with Bird and Degrassi hot on the tail of Buemi. Dramatic conflict and one more moment of history about to be made. It's an amazing city, an amazing track, as we get ready for the first FIA Formula E race here in Mexico City. Pole position, Jerome D'Ambrosio in the red and black Dragon car. Jerome, got a radio check, radio check, Jerome. Radio check, Jay. With Lucas Degrassi starting third. Radio check. Loud and clear. Championship leader starting fifth. Radio check. All five lights are on, and we go green in Mexico City. Go, go, go! D'Ambrosio's got the lead covered, and Apt and Degrassi are so close to each other. Will everyone make it through? All right, Jerome, good start. Give us the uh, energy consumption. Great start. One, five, four. Buemi might be close enough on the run down towards turn one. He's going to look to the inside line, but Daniel Apt will try and cover. Buemi looks to the outside line and goes through around the outside. Great move from Sebastian Buemi. Still 1% delta, and we have fan boost for next car. Box this lap. And there's the look from Degrassi up the inside, and he's waited until the final lap before the pit stop window to make the move on Nico Prost and move up into second position. D'Ambrosio is out in the lead. So Buemi comes out behind the apt car of Degrassi, and actually Prost is now behind Buemi. Your race, buddy. Great stuff. Your race. Let's bring it home here. Key couple of moments now for Lucas Degrassi. Can he attack? He's got fan boost as well, and he's using it now. Here comes Lucas Degrassi. He's on fan boost, Jerome. Take your line. He's on fan boost. And D'Ambrosio covers the inside line, and Degrassi still tries to look to the inside line. So close between them, Degrassi locks up, manages to get it stopped in time, and takes the lead of the Mexico E3. Here comes Buemi up the inside, coming down into one. Oh, c'est quoi ça? Il peut pas changer de ligne comme ça. Buemi's looking inside. And they just told D'Ambrosio on the radio, Buemi's going to look to the inside. Oh, he's into the back of him. They come together. C'est un gros malade comme il change de trajectoire. C'est completely crashing to me. D'Ambrosio under pressure. Look from the inside from Buemi. He's darting around in the mirrors. He's trying to go around the outside. Great attempt from Sebastian Buemi. Surely he cut across the track there. He cut the chicane. He cut the chicane. It's not passé, so il faut que tu rentres la place. An audacious attack. But, and here comes Prost attacking, and they're going to make contact there. And this is really difficult times for D'Ambrosio. Buemi's slowing down, D'Ambrosio's going wide through, goes Prost, and I think Buemi's trying to slow to give the place back. What the f is he doing? He is absolutely livid, and so he goes straight over the chicane himself. What's going on, guys? I don't understand. And has he done it now? Yes, he has. So Buemi has let D'Ambrosio back through into that second place. Lucas Degrassi, out through the final corner, is going to win in Mexico City. He's going to take the lead of the Formula E Championship with a fantastic drive. But here comes Sebastian Buemi, right under the wheels, and it's side by side for second. But there was still more drama to come after post-race scrutineering found Lucas Degrassi's race-winning Abtcar to be 1.8 kilos under the minimum weight. As a result, the driver was disqualified and the team decided not to appeal the decision, handing victory to Jerome D'Ambrosio and the Dragon Racing team.
the second time D'Ambrosio has won in Formula E thanks to a Degrassi disqualification. The race was fantastic. You know, I give I give everything I had. I mean, uh, it's uh, it's really difficult to challenge with these guys. I want to thank the team. You know, all the guys, engineers, the mechanics. So thanks to all of them. You crossed the finish line first in Mexico. It was taken away from you, disqualified for being underweight. What happened? It was a combination of pushing the limits and a miscalculation from my engineer. As simple as that? As simple as that. It could cause another championship loss, uh, but we still have six races to go, so we have to make sure that uh, it doesn't happen again. After the drama in Mexico, Degrassi looks for redemption on one of America's most enduring and best-known street circuits. Formula E inevitably made shockwaves on the shoreline of Long Beach, California. Wemi, who could have lost the championship lead in Mexico City, was now leading rival Degrassi by 22 points. So, would Degrassi be able to make up the ground on this iconic track? Welcome to one of the world's best known street circuits, Long Beach, California. Sam Bird moves up to pole position after the disqualification of fast timer Antonio Felix da Costa. Look at the radio check from our control station. Loud and clear. Check radio, check radio. Radio, okay. Here are the lights. Here's the start. Go, go, go. And the launch. Perfect launch from both front row there. Clean getaway for everyone. Trying to jockey into position. Robin Frain's completely out of control there, going into the, on the breaking zone. Okay, Sam, you got Degrassi behind you. Sarazan is next, then Heidfeld. Well, there's a pass there from the Dragon car, going past that John Eric Byrne there in the, the DS Virgin car. John Eric has not got a handle on this track yet. Alamo last year's screen shows the available energy remaining in the cars. Extra point two nine. Use it, mate. Use the extra. Understood. We had contact, I think, in the hairpin. Antonio Felix da Costa trying to come forward. Oh, we've got bits of bodywork coming off. As many straights as that this track has, energy saving is going to be key. Oh, oh. lock in the rears. And he's managed to hold it. <laughs> Nicely done. That looked like runoff for sure. <laughs> or wall. There's a move. There's Tap a move. Down oh. the inside goes Sebastian Buemi. Takes fifth place for Matt. Textbook. This is in the hairpin. Oh, no. oh. oh dear. That oh, was spectacular. No. Come on, Frins has to stop his rear wing. He's hanging. Oh, we've got a pass for the lead. A pass for the lead. There we As go. Lucas, Lucas de Grassi, Grassi yep. takes over. Told him a dummy in the dirty part of the track, and off he Ooh. goes. These guys now need a safety car. I mean, they, they could even go a lap down at this point. And all he's doing a car he's change. He's going to get out. Wow. This is huge for the championship. Oh, absolutely. Okay, Lucas Degrassi leading the race. Sebastian Buemi in the pit lane. On pourra jamais finir la course. On a 20 kilowatts. Il nous en manque 8. Je vais pas être responsable. C'était obligatoire de s'arrêter. Oh, Sam Burke. Oh man, turn five in the, uh, in, the, in the in the runoff there. Ah. Oh. Sam, you okay? Sam, is the car okay? Yes, copy, car is okay. What position are we in now? Sam, you're P7, P7. Here's the replay of Sam Bird's accident. What happened to Bird? What happened to Bird? Bird crashed back on track, back on track. There's Leonardo DiCaprio in the, in yeah. the crowd there. Looks like he's having a, a yeah. fun time. Partner in the Venturi team. And there we go. Standing O down in the hairpin as the checkered flag waves. Sweet redemption for Lucas Degrassi. Brilliant, Lucas. I'm speechless. Well done. Brilliant job. Yeah, it was a fantastic race. Uh, we had the pace. We proved that Mexico was just a mistake. And uh, yeah, we, we are back on the fight. Here comes the race winner, Lucas Degrassi, who is going to enjoy this one. Look at that crowd. Like a rock concert. That's what it's all about right there. That feeling on the podium. Round seven and across to Europe. Paris, the city of light, played host to another electric street race. Four French drivers and two French manufacturers looked to impress against the beautiful backdrop of Le Envalide. I was very excited because Paris has always been uh, 
very in favor, you know, for the environment and electrical cars. It, it was really, really great, you know, because the, the location is absolutely unbelievable. Well, I think Paris was a very special moment in Formula E history. Maybe even the most important moment in Formula E history, because to race in that location really showed the potential of Formula E. Nerves for Renault, nerves for DS as we wait for the lights. Pole position on the right-hand side is Sam Bird. Radio check, Sam. Copy that. Alongside him is Lucas Degrassi. Lucas, radio check. Loud and clear. The second row is Vern and Sarazan. Radio check. Radio check, loud and clear. All five lights are on. And we're green in Paris. It's a good start from Terrible Degrassi. Terrible start from Sam Bird. A fantastic start as well from Nico Prost. He dives up the inside and here comes Degrassi, surely to take the lead of the race into the right-hander of turn one. And all Vern just about getting it stopped. Lucas Degrassi takes the lead of the Visa Paris e Prix. Vern is up into second place. Bird drops from first down to third. Paddle six, talk three. Should have listened to me on the paddle. Pas mal plus vite que Torvel, mais c'est très difficile à dépasser. Okay, Lucas, current gap 3.2 seconds. Here comes Sebastian Buemi on the outside now down Tough to turn move. eight. Tough Is he going to be able to pull this off? Oh, he did it! Wow. There goes Robin Frains up the inside of Turvey. So Turvey loses two places in as many laps and De Costa up the inside. Goodness me, he had to mount those curbs to avoid him. <laughs> We're on board with Bird looking to the outside of Vern, but he needs to watch his mirrors too because those Renaults are coming. Buemi has got past Prost. Sam has 0 0.20 more than you. That's enough for him to push flat out to turn one. Jeb has been told that you have more energy than him, so he might be expecting you. Go flat, go flat. Oh, here's the move. Oh, and the inside goes Bird, and the two DS Virgin guys hit each other, <laughs> and Bird holds on on the inside. Tell him to get out of the way. What the hell was he doing? Get me out in front of him. He's trying to drive me off the circuit. There goes the grassy. Tell me what to do now. We remain on our strategy. And now here come the Virgin guys. Who's in front? It is still John Eric. Still John Eric Verne, oh, and then look. Buemi and Bosco. Oh, oh, oh. Unsafe release! Unsafe release! Wow, incredibly tight. Yep, and he's using his fan boost now. Sebastian Buemi, Sam Bird, will he have to defend coming into eight? No, Buemi's not quite close enough. Good defending. Buemi just used his fan boost. He used 1.33 though, and we're only 0.1 ahead. Allez, c'est bien, c'est bon. Continue. Je lui mets la pression. T'es prêt. This is the battle over third place. Bird covers the inside line. Super late on the brakes. Locks oh, up. No. Goes straight on. Through goes Buemi. Bird spins it back around and gets going. Buemi is the car behind. I don't care about Buemi. I think he's got the guys here in front. I want him. Yes, and you can take him. Oh, and Mars in the wall. And that is at turn 14. Oh, he's gone in big. Lucas, safety car, safety car deployed. This is race control, this is race control to all drivers. We will end this session behind the safety car. Lucas Degrassi takes the checkered flag and wins the first ever Visa Paris E Prix. Lucas, you're a superstar. That's an on-track hat-trick. Congratulations, brilliant drive. Great job, team. great job. Flawless job, thank you very much. This is a tricky track. I was uh, kind of lucky that Sam had too much wheel spin at the start. I managed to make the move. Uh, and then I uh, was just trying to keep my energy. Good job, man. Uh, he was putting some pressure, especially on the outlap uh, with the cold tires. It was very, very tricky condition, so I'm glad that I bring the car home. Phenomenal race here in Paris. Delight for Lucas Degrassi. 11 points clear now at the top of the championship. Berlin, one of Europe's most iconic cities, set the scene for round eight of the FIA Formula E Championship. As Lucas Degrassi and the AB team looked to close the gap on Buemi and Renault Edams. The eighth round of the championship. It's all eyes on Buemi, second on the grid. What a chance this is for him to try and close in on championship leader Lucas Degrassi, who's down in eighth on the grid. Radio check. Copy, Lauren, clear. Radio check. 
All five lights are on, and we go green in Berlin, and it's a very good start from Buemi. Is he going to wrestle the lead away on the run down towards the first corner? Yes, Buemi leads. He's managed to get past Vern, and he moves over, and they almost touch as they come into the first corner. Once again, Vern doesn't get the start from Pole, and Buemi is away in the lead of the race. Sam, how was your launch? Launch was okay, a bit of wheel spin, but with a bit more heat, it should be okay, I think. But look how close Vern is. Vern's going for the lead. Up the inside, down into turn one. And Vern retakes the lead of the e -Prix. And there comes Buemi up the inside, and he's through. Down into turn ten. Buemi finds the room and retakes the lead of the e -Prix. Buemi has more energy. Let's not focus on Buemi. He's out of reach. Here's a look at it again from Buemi. Oh, goodness me, that was close. And that was just about a card's whip. Sam Bird is getting a black flag with an orange disc as well, just for that slightly loose front nose. It's not falling off, guys, it's fine. I know, they seem really sensitive. There are already black flags, one or two other cars on this. They seem really sensitive. And there's the look from Daniel Apt. He's got the move done. Is he going to get it stopped, though? They're both locking their wheels, and Apt does get it turned in. So Daniel Apt through into second position. How many more laps do I stay out? No, Sam, you need to box now. You've already had two. There's a three maximum. Box now, box now. That's ridiculous. It's not falling off, guys. Is that the end of Sam Bird's championship challenge? I think, realistically, it is. You are now put on eight seconds and the third, yeah. Copy. And here comes the look from Prost up the inside, going into the chicane, and he's still not close enough, and Vern loses his front wing. And surely he's not going to be able to hold that position. He's not. Through goes Nico Prost. OK, it seems Prost and you are on the same strategy. It's impossible Prost is the same strategy. He's using much more energy. OK, it looks like he's switched. De Grassi sells the dummy up the inside, and that's third place. Good move, good move. Oh, and out. That's Loic Duval. Has he lost it himself? Oh, there goes the back end. Straight to the scene of the accident. And look how close the grassy is to Daniel Abt. He's got to try and find a way. Can you let Lucas by? He's quicker. There we go. Let Lucas by. He's quicker. Is the command to Daniel Abt. No, Daniel. If he doesn't attack Wim, I attack Wim. Try to attack Wim, OK? Copy. No more talking from now on. Are they going to do the swap, the two app drivers? He waves to the inside line. And, well, it hasn't quite worked out there, has it? So final lap started by Sebastian Buemi. He turns through the final corner now, and he wins in Berlin. Victory for Buemi, and Daniel Abt is yeah. going to finish second. And yeah. that is going to be awkward. I wanted to let Lucas pass. I slowed down and pointed out, but he didn't do it, so I don't know. Yeah, I'm very happy. I'm very happy to see so many people here today. It's an amazing feeling to be winning in Germany, you know. Uh, the Germans won in, uh, in uh, France, uh, and now we win, so it's, it's amazing, although for the championship, to be back, to have a clean day, you know, with a good qualifying. You know, I'm, I'm very happy, so now we will uh, celebrate it with the team. We are second in Germany! Yeah! Merci, les mecs. Belle course, pas de cadet. Bravo, team. Bravo. Victory for Sebastian Buemi. He's closed in on his championship-leading rival, Lucas de Grassi. One point between them as we go to the final round in London. You couldn't write it. And so it all came down to this. The season finale in Battersea Park, London. One point. Two races. The making of a sportsman. A racing driver. A racing driver. He's not just his record. His skill. Buemi sells in the dummy, flew into second place. Not just his team. Brilliant, Lucas. I'm speechless. Well that. Or his car. It's all these things. And then there is this. Desire. 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 As we approach the first race of this double-headed showdown, three drivers could still mathematically win the championship, but realistically, it was down to two. 60 points available from two races and just one point separating Degrassi and Buemi. The team championship was also tight. Renault Edams led Abd by just 14 points, with DS Virgin Racing and the Dragon team battling it out for third place.
for me is all about preparation for the weekend. But uh, one point lead is it's not manageable. We just go for the weekend to try to win it as we did for every weekend. There's a lot of tension on that grid there, particularly the two championship protagonists. For Degrassi, crucially, he's in front of Buemi. Radio check, Peter. Radio, okay. Radio check. Copy loud and clear. Prost on pole, Senna alongside him. Derby and France on row two. We go green in London and it's a lot of wheel spin for Bruno Senna. Looks as though Prost has got a good start. Senna tucks into second position, a lot of darting in the middle of the pack. Derby in third, France doesn't get a good getaway. Daniel Apt is on the inside there as they come in towards the left-hander at turn three at Prince Albert and it's Prost who holds the lead. Lucas, good job. Take a look at energy consumption. Oh, there's Buemi on the, on the inside. Great move, doing what it needs to do, one at a time here. Sebastian Buemi then up into 10th place, just one position, and is Degrassi going to be close enough for Heidfeld? He goes for it, into the Millennium chicane, and he gets the job done. Well done, great job. I'm coming behind them. Copy, attack. Well, there's the move. There's Degrassi going past Daniel App, so neatly executed. Oh, lock up from Degrassi. Does he get it stopped? Yes, he does. Here's the look from Daniel Apt. Uh, he's having to defend really hard from Buemi. Oh, and Buemi has to really get out of it. You were never going to get around the outside at turn three, though. No, but it was only move that was open to him. He plants the front view du virage. Ça c'est pas correct. Reste calme. La course est longue. Reste calme. Here comes Daniel Apt, and he's going past Sam Bird. Oh, but he's locked up. Goodness me! He almost takes oh. out his teammate. That could have been a catastrophe of epic proportions. And here comes Degrassi up the inside of Robin Frains coming down into the uh, Lake Chicane. And is he going to get through? Yes, Degrassi up into fifth place. Here comes Buemi, he's got around the outside and he's got past Robin Frains up the inside into the Millennium Chicane. So now it's fifth and sixth for the two championship protagonists. Buemi and Degrassi continue to shadow each other, moving up the grid. A petit virage dans les low speed. And oh, no, off goes Daniel Apt, he's hit the wall, he's lost it, oh, and he's hit Frank. Oh. what a horrible, clumsy accident. On board with go. Lucas Degrassi, oh. not no, quite no, close no, enough, no, yes, no. he goes for it, no, Degrassi no. up the inside and they hit each other, and that almost spins him around. Here comes Buemi. Buemi's got the overlap, and, Buemi, and Degrassi oh. says, no way, you're coming through there, son. <laughs> oh, his wing's broken, Degrassi's front wing is broken. Degrassi, the front wing is broken. Oh, it's hanging it, over that, onto the wheels. If that gets caught in the steering mechanism, it is all over for him. The championship leader could be seeing his challenge go up in smoke. Buemi's used fan boost. Up the inside comes Sebastian Buemi. He does, back to the outside line, but he's not quite close enough. But he's got, oh, Degrassi's gone in very, very deep, and Buemi is all over the back of him. But you can't take the risk today. It's all about the championship finale tomorrow. The wing's the gone. There. The wing's gone for Lucas Degrassi. That pod has disappeared. So, or no, is it lodged under the front? Oh, there it, oh, goes. There it goes. Degrassi covers the inside line. Look how much more speed Buemi's got. He looks to the outside later on. The brakes. Are oh, they going to get it stopped? Just about. Très, très dur à dépasser. Goodness me, these two are racing wheel to wheel. But now it's victory for Nico Prost. Ah! But who's going to come across the line in terms of the championship leaders? It is just going to be Lucas Degrassi to hold on to fourth place across the line. Yeah, I mean, the team gave me a, a it was a fantastic car. To be honest, uh, I pulled away and, and then I was just thinking, stay focused. All I can do is make a mistake. And the safety car was not so happy about was also watching the sky because there were a few drops, but uh, yeah, thank you to, to the team because the car today was just amazing. Our race winner, Nico Prost. Dominant, absolutely dominant. Oh, and, look at that. Oh, fantastic. Nico and Alain embrace Prost victorious in London. But that's only half of the story. The championship conclusion comes tomorrow. With one race to go, Degrassi and Buemi were both on 153 points. If it was to finish like this, Degrassi would win by virtue of having more podium finishes. But how vital would the two points for fastest lap be in deciding this year's championship? In the battle for the teams, Renault Edams were 40 points clear of Abd, giving them a very strong chance of once again being crowned the Constructors' Champions. I was worried about what could happen in turn one, yes, because we had the same points and I knew that if I would not finish and Lucas would not finish, I would lose the championship. So clearly for me, it was very important to finish ahead of him and I had the car to win the race, so that was my objective. Sebastian Buemi on pole position, his Renault teammate Nico Prost alongside him. Lucas Degrassi and Oliver Turvey are on the second row of the grid. It's the championship decider in the second round of FIA Formula E. 
We go green in London. It's a very good start from Degrassi. Is he going to be able to pull alongside and try and attack Nico Prost on the run down to turn one? He's not quite able to do so. Tucks in behind Nico Prost. How aggressive is he going to be coming down into turn three into the left hander? He goes side by side. Oh, he hits He's hit him. I don't believe it. The two championship contenders out at turn one. And that means Degrassi would win the championship on countback. What the f he did? On avait prévu qu'il pouvait faire ça, on ne pensait pas qu'il était aussi fou que ça. Votre voiture est prête Vous mettez la high down force, vous préparez tout, on va faire le meilleur tour. All Buemi needs to do now is come into the pits, change over into his other car, set the fastest lap, and he could win the championship. Mikko Prost in the second of those cars in front, the Renault Edam's cars. Yeah, oh. I mean, he, he was feathering and, and, and braking. I honestly think, yeah, I think they braked early, but that doesn't negate that you've got to avoid the collision. He'll the car behind. Oh, look at Degrassi there. They braked so early, they braked so early there. That's what Degrassi reckons. He was side by side with Prost. Lucas, uh, we're going to do a car change and we're going to try to go for fastest lap. Oh, uh, big move round oh, the outside. From Maps trying to get through and he's, well, he has done it. This is on board with Antonio Felix da Costa, who's now in eighth position. Look at that. How close can he get to the back of Nelson Piquet Jr.? Whoever does the fastest lap will win the championship. Here, Here he comes, comes yeah, across the, the line. line. 26-0 is set right now, fastest lap, and it's a 24-5. Oh. Buemi has taken quickest lap, he's taken quickest lap. And he's just gone, okay, guys, beat that. And out towards the line. Surely this is going to be the fastest lap of the race from Lucas Degrassi, which would give him two championship points across the line. 24.6, it's not. It's two tenths slower. Sorry, that was the maximum, maximum, maximum I could do. Here we go. What's this lap going to be? Across the line comes Sebastian Buemi. Is it going to be even faster? 24.5, it's going to be, <laughs> yes, 24.150. Great lap. And that's it. It's over. Half a tenth. We missed it by 500. The, the check and flag falls. Brost wins. Renault are the champions. There we yeah. go. You're the champion, Sebastian. It's difficult to realize. I was not um, expecting to celebrate it that way. But uh, now we'll take a few minutes. Uh, the team won it and we won. So I'm more than happy. Yeah? Sebastian Buemi started the season with a pole position in Beijing. And now it's victory here. Jean Paul Drio loves it. Huge celebration for Sebastian Buemi, the championship winner. So Sebastian Buemi dramatically won the Drivers' Championship by just two points. Lucas Degrassi finishing second. And those back to back checkered flags meant Nico Prost overtook Sam Bird to take third. A commanding win for Renault Edams meant they clinched their second consecutive Constructors' Championship, beating Ab Schaffler Audi Sport by 49 points. It feels great to be the Formula E champion. Once I knew it was over and we had won, it, it was like a big, uh, big emotion, you know, because after losing the championship last year for one point, I, I really felt this year I need to fight for every point. And when you look at uh, how much uh, we won with, it's not a big margin at all. We said at the beginning of the year that the goal this year was to be champion and constructors and driver championship. So we had to uh, we had to do it, and we made it in a very difficult way, but we finally made it. Season two was another fantastic success, the consolidation of the project of Formula E. Season three, much more to come, more excitement, better for performance, new races. Just follow Formula E again. What a journey it has been. It's been an interesting season. A lot of changes to the cars and to the teams. We go green in Beijing. The high was definitely the beginning of the season, race one. It's going to hit him, oh my goodness me. We finished on the podium. Buemi wins the first race. Merci, <laughs> mec. In Malaysia, I was P2. And then we got a mechanical failure. The highs were definitely Malaysia, first podium finish. And it's a third place for Robin Frains. Degrassi is the winner in Putrajaya. The next quick left-hander that I did, uh, I mean, I just lost control. He's in the wall! PK off! It's Sebastian Buemi, our race winner. Merci, <laughs> mec. Obviously, the main high has been the win in Buenos Aires. Bird takes victory in Argentina! Yeah! Come on! Definitely the low has been Mexico disqualification. He's on bad with drum. Yes! Awesome, guys! And then I think the high came straight after in Long Beach. Woo!
Woo! Sweet redemption for Lucas Degrassi. In Long Beach, we had a good race. I finished second. I had a crash with Amy. Long Beach was for me a negative race. Clearly lost a lot of points. To race for Renault in France is fantastic. Lucas, you're a superstar. Congratulations. Brilliant drive. Second place in Paris in front of my home crowd was pretty amazing. Tell him to get out of the way! What the hell was he doing? And we go green in Berlin! The double podium together with Lucas was incredible for the whole team. Yes, second! Good job, Eddie! Yeah! To be back, to have a clean day, you know, I'm very happy, so now we will uh, celebrate it with the team. Merci, les mecs. Belle course. One point. Two races. We go green in London. Goodness me, the grassy holds the place. It's victory for Nico Frost. C'est qui le patron ici? Yes! It's the championship decider. Oh, he hit him! He's hit him! I don't believe it! The two championship contenders! Buemi is the FIA Formula E champion. Frost wins. Renault are the champions. Season two gave a glimpse of the possibilities. In season three, they become realities from one historic location to another. Jaguar has returned to racing. See you in Hong Kong.